going to just speak through some of our processes that we've been going over for the last few years uh, and are thinking about what now needs to happen. Some of this will be just in slides, so I hope that you'll bear with us. You know, PowerPoint's a bit tedious, but then we'll have breakout rooms and we'll be using a Miro board. I don't know if everyone's familiar with the Miro board and how that works. If not, it's really very simple and we'll be able to talk you through it. Um, but what we'll be doing through the Miro board is designing something um, uh, that, that, that may help us to be able to prototype the parallel polis um, you know, in the coming years, not something that can be done automatically. So I'm going to um, invite the newcomers to put something about themselves in the chat box, if you could. Um, and I will be sharing my screen now and going over to the... So, Patrick. Hi. Okay. Well, we're starting. We're at the Untitled Conference, which has a fabulous and exciting prospectus and set of ambitions. And when we were asked to be involved in this, we were asked to dedicate ourselves to one or other of the grander themes. And the one that really popped out to us was the idea of ontological politics. Now, just presuming everybody knows what ontology or ontological means, but we find it an, it's an intriguing idea to talk about in the current moment, uh, um, ontology being what we take for or what we define as reality in our, in our discourse and our discussions, and politics being about power. But an ontological politics is a really intriguing idea. One thing that we thought immediately is that we, seem, we, we all seem to be involved in battles to define reality, and this is a multi-perspectival battle. I mean, the populist uh, nationalist uh, territorial sovereignty revival is, is an argument about what we take for the reality of, poli of the polity or the reality of our politics or the reality of the, the, the zone in which we act as opposed to globalization. Climate change is a huge battle about ontology uh, of, of, of competing scientific claims, but also how we relate to uh, a future defined as open or fateful. Um, conspiracy theory is part of that, the, the rise of conspiracy theory is part of that as well, our, our, our doubt about the institutions and processes that have defined reality to us up till now, uh, the, the general doubt about that generates conspiracy theories. So when you think about that further, you think about how, how, are, we, how are we handling things um, ontologically is we have to think about the role of media and representation and so although fake news is maybe more epistemology than ontology, it's still about a definition of reality that works for a community and there's a, there's a proper political power battle about what that reality is for what community. So that's ontological politics really works for us as a phrase. And then just something that we've been picking up on, on our other research is um, the idea of ontology is a deep construction of reality. You know, we're, we're sort of aware in the digital age that there are algorithms and there are literal ontologies going computer game world makers create ontologies that work you know physics and social rituals that work that makes the, the computer game work so people are constructing ontologies as a part of mass entertainment and mass um, simulation but also you know we are as you'll see from our subsequent slides we're really interested in questions about human nature and certainly a lot of the neuroscience and the psychology we are reading, the science of emotions and consciousness studies, is assuming that we construct our ontology from our processing minds and that reality is as much a negotiation between our consciousness and reality as it is something out there. So just, just that's just a sort of an overview of the interest that we have in the idea of an ontological politics. It doesn't, it's not a gimmicky phrase for us, it's actually quite pertinent and powerful how, how what is the what is the politics of how you define and agree to a sense of reality that seems to us quite an urgent question okay moving with this idea of an ontological politics we've been questioning um you know what what is the sense of agency that we can feel at this time when we think about um, 
when we think about politics. So the reality of uh, citizens having no form really of direct agency, what we're perceiving is multiple forms of agency. And um, just over the past few months, actually, we've been noticing how often this image of an elephant seems to be cropping up in a lot of the discussions about different kinds of agency that people are expressing. So in the top right hand corner, this sense that there is so much power, maybe this comes from um, you know, the, 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 the Extinction Rebellion or the Occupy movement, this sense that there is so many people who share a complaint about the state of our planet um, and that the sheer numbers of us um, should somehow be overwhelming. Even so, we're very much like <clears throat> the elephant that was trained at birth um, with a rope around its ankle to feel powerless. And that in the public space, we feel this powerlessness all the time. This seems to be a factor of our current political agency. At the same time, there is the elephant in the room. This constant knowledge that we're not really addressing the things that matter, that we're not really addressing the climate in a central way, we're not really addressing poverty in a central way. We're still obsessed with a growth economy and with really lifestyle um, and continued ability to stay with the status quo. Um, at the bottom is another elephant idea, this idea that many, many of us are somehow the blind man and the elephants together trying to come up with a new solution but coming at it from all angles each one of us really only able to see a small part of what it is that needs to arise and then in the middle there i don't know how many of you will recognize the picture of the the film of the elephants moving in china this is something that really shows the power of the internet to capture our imagination when we saw those elephants moving this is this was just a film really about a group of elements that started to make a trek across China. It was somehow able to entrance so many people. There was so much sharing, there was so much fascination. And in the process of that, there was a sort of changing attitude in some way towards China. So just fascinating how the elephant itself as a, as a prevailing image was, is, is having an, an, an effect, if you like, on the public sphere, but without any really, without being able to deliver any real agency whatsoever. And for that reason, this image of the boiling frog in the water is one that probably speaks to a lot of us. You know, am I somehow feeling as if I'm doing something, but at the same time, I'm not really doing anything. Nothing much that I can do is really making a difference. And yet at the same time, I feel as if I am making a difference. <laughs> am I slowly boiling to death? This is just another sense in a way, you know, I'm just trying to evoke a feeling of the political sphere <clears throat> where in fact, um, you, you, you know, there is no real clear sense of, of the agency that we're all trying to generate for ourselves. So this is how we came into the alternative. Um, and a lot of people I know in the um, untitled uh, community uh, are familiar with the work of Roberto Unger. And Roberto Unger used this phrase once in one of his speeches that, that really captured for us how we want to feel at this time. You know, we want to feel as if we're using all of our potential agency as human beings to really give what we can give and to cause uh, not only change to happen, but to be able to feel as if we're part of doing something that is meaningful. And we came you know, to really these four really important shifts that need to occur, you know, which is a shift in our idea of the future, that we should have a future we all look forward to. That, so therefore there needs to be a shift in the story that we're telling ourselves about where power and agency lie. And this really adds up to this ontological shift that Pat was talking about. It's not just a question of a system shift on paper or a system shift in political structure, but it needs to be a feeling that we can somehow all buy into that is attractive for us all, 
that we can wake up in the morning embodying um, so that our so, so, so that we can feel uh, that we're do, that, that we're really working together and seeing results happen. This ontological shift we feel cannot really be achieved easily um, within the current political uh, framework or culture or structure. So when we started the alternative, we looked at the facts um, and across Europe, I think everybody here is from Europe, uh, certainly in the UK and across Europe, uh, only 2% of people are members of the political parties. And as a result of that, um, you know, the, 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 the discourse that is generated by that 2% who have their hands, if you like, on all the real power levers uh, is still is the one that is being fed on by the mainstream media. And we're all part of that um, media bubble. And what we're proposing is how can we recreate and reimagine a politics that instead links directly the much more complex idea of an individual. So in other words, we're not simply homo economicus, only looking for new things to consume or you know, the movement of money or you know, simply material responses to our needs, but we need a full, what we would call a biopsychosocial spiritual reckoning um, and a politics that answers to that. How do we engage and be able to use our agency and how can we um, guarantee that, that as we bring our agency together, it will have an impact upon the planet. So we see this as a new political access, the relationship between the flourishing of the individual, the flourishing, if you like, of human agency that we find in our communities, that we find in the spaces that we actually operate, and for that to have an impact upon the planet. So one of the main, uh, the, one of the very first things that we felt needed to happen was that we should, uh, you know, attempt to generate this new story. And uh, I'll pass it back to Pat to describe what we do with the daily alternative. Sure. Thanks, Sandra. Um, <clears throat> I mean, one, one of the things, one of the classic things that constitutes um, a public sphere uh, is news media, is publications, is, is a marketplace of ideas. And I'm, my background is partly in newspaper editing. So one of the instruments to bring about this uh, different calibration of how we think about ourselves politically, this I we world calibration, was to imagine what would a different daily news media be. So, and I don't know what it's like in any of your countries, but when you talk about a newspaper title, you talk about the Daily Citizen or the Daily Watch or the Daily Guardian. Um, we thought, well, why don't we have a daily alternative? And it's a very simple iteration, one story or many stories, but at least every day, uh, according to a, a taxonomy of concepts uh, that really start, begin from this I, we world perspective. How do we flesh that out story by story, example by example, uh, such that it creates a world uh, of truth and of reality within which people can see themselves acting uh, differently in relation to the big crises of the time. So uh, the two big crises that kind of I would say overshadow much of the alternative is climate crisis, but also uh, automation and probably um, diversity of cultures as well. So to run an editorial on that is to shape a world within which people can see things differently and then act in relation to those things differently. Um, and certainly that is, if we're talking about a parallel polis later on, but that's one of the components of a parallel polis is that, is that reality is actively framed in a certain way and invites action in a certain way. So it's not problems journalism, as it were, it's solutions journalism or constructive journalism. And so the idea is people wake up every morning to a news feed that enables them to act uh, in a way that addresses large crises like climate, climate catastrophe or automation. So that's an instrument of the, of the parallel polis, which we'll talk about in a bit. Thank, Thank you. you. And the second thing that we that we do at the alternative so on the one hand we do the new media system and the second thing we do is that we started to build what we call community action networks and the reason for doing that was that we felt that um, as people are 
lost in this world of the internet and in a public space or where they have no direct agency, the best way for them to experience direct agency mm -hmm. was to build small, what we call cosmolocal systems on the ground. So our idea there, we started out, if you like, prototyping some of these citizens action networks in uh, Plymouth and then in Birmingham and also in Stoke, different parts of the UK. And what we were attending to do was to bring together what we call the uh, usual suspects, people like us who are already doing the work. We added to that the people who are generally excluded from that work, but who maybe share the values. And then we bring, you know, we made events that would uh, attract people who may not be mm -hmm. interested in the question of politics, but might be interested in coming together as a community to feel some sort of new uh, container for building trust and making new relationships together, um, to have something to belong to, if you like, and then to begin to imagine the future together and initiate some new, maybe social enterprise dread, uh, driven projects. This active building of what we come to call uh, CANs, either citizens action networks or community agency networks, always had this, what we call cosmolocal, uh, factor, which was, uh, it wasn't as sort of imagined as a small flat endeavor, you know, something that community organizing is often referred to as um, nice, but um, maybe uh, not uh, agentic enough. Um, but it was always linked, if you like, to what is possible, uh, the intelligence that is available in the creative commons and uh, you know, from the internet that was being used on the ground. So they're always having this, uh, it's not simply glocalism, but like what we call cosmolocalism present in these cans. Um, and as we were building them, we were really uh, recognizing that these cans existed already in many forms uh, all over the world. So those of you familiar with transition towns or eco villages, or uh, huge cooperative um, uh, enterprises, you know, such as Mondragon, or you know, these this idea of building citizens' agency within a community, having a container for uh, our agency, so that we could feel it, experience it, and know that we were addressing the planet. This is really coming. Uh, be, you know, become, you know, becoming um, mm -hmm. clear to us is the new unit, if you like, of this uh, a new of a, of a politics that would have at its core the axis of connecting the I to the we to the world. But how, but how how could these cans uh, become, uh, as to say, a factor or a, a unit in a new politics? Because if we started to institutionalize them, or if in any way that we would be centralizing, uh, you know, some sort of design um, design process, we knew that it would become rigid, and uh, we would soon be trying to offer a new status quo, which is clearly not what we were trying to do. So, uh, Pat, maybe uh, explain what the what the idea of a constitute is, uh, different from an institution. Yeah, I mean, this is a bit of a fun game for those of you who know your English tenses very well, but we're in the process of trying to find what the new uh, units, the new democratic or sovereign or expressive units of a new politics might be. And we came across the fact that in, the, in English dictionaries, we found a gap in the dictionary on the page, which was that we know what an institution is as a noun. We know what a constitution is as a noun. We know what an institute is as a noun or a verb, an institute or to institute something. We know constitute as a verb, to constitute something is to make bring something together. But we actually found a gap in the dictionary, which is constitute as a noun. So it's a blank space. What do we do? Let's use it. Um, and we kind of had a, we've had a couple of events around about the, about the idea. But <clears throat> if you look at the definition, look at the definition on screen, you probably can't read it. It's too, it's too, the print is too small. But we hazarded a, de a definition of what is a constitute as opposed to an institute. 
and we came up with a couple of definitions. A constitute is a composition or a forming. So some, a, a, a loose formation that is determined by those that are in it. Um, it a constitute could also be uh, the leadership function of a community. So rather than a community being you know, directed by leaders, they would appoint their leaders and give them strategies rather than the leaders giving the community members strategy. And then the final definition was, what is a constitute? A flexible social structure that connects community purpose with infrastructural and productive technologies. Now, I don't know if that's going to make it into the Oxford English Dictionary, but it's just an example of how we'll need to bring um, old, uh, new names to old names to new processes. So we offer that to you. If there's, there's a gap in the dictionary, constitute isn't a noun. Um, how would you uh, interpret and fill it out as a way of describing a new unit of, of political agency for a, for a new society? Uh, next slide, please, Andrew. <laughs> oh, no, not again. Oh, here we go. Okay. Shall I shall I speak through this? Yes, Andrew? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So, what is a parallel polis as a catch-all term for the uh, zone of new political structures and democratic innovations that we've been talking about so far? Well, it actually comes. It's actually quite an old term, um, coined by Czech dissidents in the seventies and eighties. Uh, not just Václav Havel, but another one of his co colleagues there on the on the right with the big blue arrow called Vaclav Bender. So there's Vaclav Havel and Vaclav Bender. That's the um, Charter 77, which was the great declaration of human rights uh, 10 years, uh, uh, 12 years before 1989. Um, so what is a parallel polis? In Havel's words, and this is what excited us about this idea, a parallel polis is made up from informed, non-bureaucratic, dynamic, and open communities. So that's really a perfect description of the kinds of structures that we're looking at when we talk about um, uh, cans or in the explorations that we've been making so far. The other thing, very interesting in terms of ontological politics, is Havel's idea that these this parallel polis should live in truth and what it means by means of their activities. So the things that they do are a more authentic a realer, a more agreed and consented to form of living uh, than the world that they're in. And the world that Havel and Bender were in was obviously the kind of systematically deceitful, uh, reality distorting life of uh, communist and the socialist sphere. Um, so the interesting question for us going forward um, is what are the false regimes that we we live in at the moment and that a parallel polis might constitute itself against. There's a very interesting article we pointed to you by Pankaj Mishra um, on the New York, in the New Yorker where it's and it's the early days of the Trump presidency and he's invoking the concept of parallel polis because he's looking at the whole Trump operation and saying this is something that we must not just oppose but come up with a new system to define our agendas differently and to value new elements like love, authenticity, community, solidarity, reciprocity, to value different ways of being human in order to uh, defy and defend and in, in a way outmode the, this oppressive regime. So it's an interesting question for the present. What are the false regimes that a, pol a, a parallel polis might constitute itself against today is quite an interesting question. Okay. So until now, we're sort of pointing at something which is a response to the current story, if you like, of us that's in the public sphere, that is a response to the chaos of the internet and the sense that all of our efforts are maybe too fragmented and unable to come together. So just to make some simple distinctions between what it could be but it isn't. Um, and all of the idea really of today's um, session together is that we should become clearer and clearer about how we can build the possibility of a parallel polis, but always remembering not to take any shortcuts um, uh, because otherwise we won't deliver the agency within it. So on the one hand, it's not, we're not imagining something that becomes direct democracy, simply everybody in the world having a chance to vote 
uh, you know, on an issue together instantly. That for us would never be enough for a genuine parallel polis. Instead, we're imagining a global governance through the can of cans. In other words, an opportunity for everyone to be a member of something that is at their local level and still somehow uh, through the proper construction of the parallel polis to be able to connect with people throughout the world who are trying to create this new axis between the health of the person, the communities and the planet. So it's not a, um, we're saying it's not colonialism uh, 2.0 or Mont Pelerin 2.0. It's not a group of people at the center, uh, you know, devising how the rest of the world should live and work uh, in a better way. Instead, it's this murmuration, you know, which describes, I don't know if anybody, everybody knows what murmuration describes, but it's, you know, how birds flock together um, and they work closely together and they do manage to take shape together in very beautiful ways, but they don't necessarily all become each other in some uh, Borg-like Borg mass of unthinking people now swept along in a new reality. This is really champions diverse intelligences and multiple forms of agency, but gives people a chance to work together towards a future that they're choosing together. So it's not issue based debate. We're not going to, this is not a place for we're just debating issues, but it's a place to build relationship at multiple levels and finding ourselves creating trust and working together. And also it's very important for us to emphasize, especially for those who work in community work, this is not simply about volunteering, about creating a good space um, and somehow escaping the need for material, um, escaping our material needs. Our material needs are part of this new parallel polis. And we already see that there's an emerging what we call fourth sector economy um, that, is, um, that is building out of these cans all over the globe. So again, it is community organizing and it is globalism, but it's also more than that. And we, we use this term cosmolocalism, something that I think people who work with the work of uh, say Michel Bowens and the peer-to-peer -peer people and the commoning principles, we're familiar with this term, but it's something that we would really champion for this. And when we're thinking about how it grows, we're not thinking about some central form scaling this, but we're thinking more about fractal emergence how cans appear all over the globe spontaneously, but when they come into community with each other, they begin to take shape and the governance system becomes possible and necessary. So this is in a way an antidote to chaos, but it comes through self-organization, not through central organization. So finally, you know, just to try to imagine it in a very practical and really ov overly sim simple way, the parallel polis as we see it is like two separate legs to the two legs that serve the one body. So we're not trying to destroy the old system. We're not trying to overtake the old system. It's not that, you know, um, it's not a strategy to, 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 to overcome. It's, it's a commitment to a parallel um, existence uh, and, and a sense of agency where everybody could take part but it works very much in partnership with governments and with councils that exist now. Yes, that's a miracle. Could you? Yeah. Could you, yeah. Could you, could you yeah. mute yourself? Could somebody mute themselves? Please? Alexandra, please mute yourself. Thank you. Okay. Um, so just in a very simple way, if you could imagine that on the right hand side, what we have right now is we have political parties, they lead to national governments, and part of that system is also the United Nations, still dominated by the old superpowers. But that is the, if you like, the, the system of power we have now. And on the left, we have this idea of a parallel polis, which begins with cans, citizens' assemblies, people's assemblies, etc., but may in time give rise to a people's parliament in every country. And that also will give rise to what we're describing as a global virtual party, 
you know, people having the opportunity to be part of something, cast a vote in something, make decisions about things, take part in the fourth sector economy um, and be actively in partnership with the, with the old system, but through the sheer force of numbers eventually be able to shape and influence that old system so that it so that uh, you know the people in a sense have more agency can make decisions and can move towards a better a better planetary impact than the one we currently have so i'm going to come out of this uh, now so that we can at first level, in a sense, begin our discussions on the parallel polis. Um, and probably now that we have more people in the room, for those of you who came after we started presenting, um, uh, it'd be great if you could put um, just a, a, your name and a line about yourself into the chat box so that we know who you are. Um, and if you could raise, use the hand raising uh, mechanism at the bottom bottom right where it says reactions you can raise your hand it would be great to just have a first response to this idea of a parallel polis does it make sense to you um can you imagine it even even briefly Belinda. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. It was really um, inspiring and resonated deeply with uh, the way I see a lot of things and the need for a lot of things. Um, I think my primary reflection is um, being a person who has been in a lot of different spheres, like I've worked in politics, I've been in civil society and in business and elsewhere, and I see um, the need of everything and everything coexisting and also having sort of that, that life beyond the, the fundamental economic means that you need to survive, if you will. I think my question is, what I see is that it doesn't strike me as if people have a sense that this is something that they want or need. And I think it is something that we all want and need, but it, it, it's as if we've been indoctrinated into this worldview that you can just sort of care about yourself and the people who are just immediately uh, around you and that will work out well for you. And I think that sort of leaves people with a, with a sense of something missing. So I think the first question that pops up for me is how do we spark a discussion around um, that this is something that people should or would want to explore so that it's not just you know the 0.5 percent of a local community that um sees this if you will i hope you understand what i'm saying <laughs> yeah yeah yes. yeah thank you uh Mikko. uh building on what uh, belinda said i was also thinking about what are the kind of the prerequisites or the capabilities needed for this and and Exactly. Why? Why should people care? Where? Where, where does the drive uh, come from? And and uh, I also asked this uh, because I'm, I was thinking how accessible is this? Because this is really kind of um, uh, well. I do agree that we need to do things differently, and that means that the different when it's not kind of clear what it is, it 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 it, it will be kind of hard to describe. But this, I think, this is the the uh, the same time a huge problem that that um, yeah we we need to be a bit more concrete on what what this could be and perhaps uh, a pluralism of of things that this the, this the, this could be might help in 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 the discussion. Yeah. Absolutely, and if I could just respond immediately to to, to both of you. Um, the concept of a parallel polis is very much something that we would bring to a group like this at Untitled. We, we, we don't think, we're not imagining for a second that you would offer this to, um, you know, somebody who isn't uh, thinking about the bigger structures or thinking in those sorts of languages like ontological politics or whole new systems. This is very much a proposal for us here 
in a sense, to, to, to awaken in our imagination something that we could take, that could be taking shape. But on the ground, it could be, um, you know, we're coming right. And in fact, the next few slides, we're going to be talking about much in much more, um, uh, you know, in, in detail, if you like, detail is not even the right word, but you know, uh, how something like this could take shape uh, on the ground to answer people's needs in their communities. Because really that's, that's, that's what's on offer. You know, what's on offer is that I, as a member of a local community, could walk into space, join up with something, and feel as if my needs are being met in that place. But that thing, it's a bit like, if you ever saw Doctor Who, it's like the TARDIS ship, you know? You walk into something, it looks tiny, but in fact, it's massive. In the same way as you walk, you turn on your computer, it's just a screen, but in fact, it's the world. And that, it's that, it's that, that shift, that's an ontological shift, if you like, that you know it's small, but it's huge. And your agency is multiplied by being part of it. That's really the idea, but it should absolutely, from, from the first encounter, it must feel real and normal and an answer to your need in this moment. Pat. Yes, and just to say the question of how we deal with whether people want to do this is a is a media stroke cultural question. And one of the things we are trying we are researching actively at the moment with a group of peers is how to create a pitch for an alternative media system. Because we do face a current media system that engenders despair, polarization, uh, passivity, fearful, angry responses. And sometimes that's just old journalism and sometimes that's conscious strategy by social media giants who want to get you interacting with their platforms such, such that they deliver you to advertisers. So we actually have quite a high level of ambition to answer the question of what do we build to deal with people's emotions and affects. Um, so a, a different form of news journalism and a different platform to serve that might be one answer. Um, but we have, we have a lot of people from the creative industries, from advertising and marketing, who come to the alternative and say, I have ideas for you that I know cannot be put through in a corporate context. How can we do something? So we're very much on that. And also one of the things about we should say about Citizens Action Networks or CANs is that they are very cultural, very convivial entities so you know if you, to bring people into a physical space and not to feed them and to entertain them and to have them play and have fun before you do anything political is a real mistake so 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 yeah so basically the question of how where people's hearts and minds are in relation to these grand concepts is it's absolutely on our minds and it's something that's part of our project our project um menu from from the very beginning from from four years ago and we have a, quite a few ideas around about that which we can share we're about to share i think so just um i'm really sorry democratic society that i've forgotten your name <laughs> paula. <laughs> paula 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 okay i'm just gonna, <clears throat> paula please um I'll, we'll just hear from paula and then we're going to go uh into something a little bit more concrete yes paula um, I was just going to add um, on what's been said that that maybe yeah there is a, there is definitely the challenge of building those parallel polis and and I think you go to the level of like a global um, virtual sort of party and so getting that kind of togetherness and without losing the complexity of there will be there will be differences there will be lots of conflicts there will be all these things that. Um, that I think maybe I didn't see in, 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 the, in the presentation. And, and I was wondering, I'm sure you've been thinking about also this idea that is, is a body with two legs, but these two systems are in parallel existing for a while. And maybe one of the two needs to become like hegemonic. If you, if you believe in that idea of democracy, that is a little bit more um, based on the idea of conflict and, um, and adversarial uh, attitudes and how do you see that transition or that relationship between the two it would be something also interesting to yeah. hear more of no absolutely because you could you could say that society is already a, a parallel polis if you like because it's you know dominated by so many different kinds of uh, thoughts but what we what we're trying to say is that we can organize ourselves within within the parallel polis um, 
to have uh, you know, to have more concrete outcomes. Um, just to take the smallest example, you know, seventy five percent of people, you know, want their governments to be really to put the, the environmental, the climate emergency at the center. And yet the governments continue to not put it quite at the center. They may say that they're doing so, but they're not taking the action that's required. So that already is why are we so powerless, right? So that already is something that would be, a, in a sense, a clear goal for the parallel policy to self-organize in that sense. And we're, present, we're presenting this as the can of cans. But I can see that there's a lot to do, and, and, and we should move into the next slide. Yeah, but just, but just to answer you as well, um, Roberto Unger, who, whose video is at the front of this website, talks about a high energy democracy. And what we take that to mean is exactly what we're talking about with coming up with constitutes or cans or new effective structures is that there has to be a semi-anarchistic, I mean, it, we, we rarely use the A word, but we'll call it semi-anarchistic energy to build new structures. And given that we are in an environment, a technological environment, which is marked by the ability to create group sentiment easily, here we are, and look, we're doing it right now in Zoom. You know, so that's to me. That's we think that's a constantly underestimated potential is for self-organisation, and I think self-organisation as the principle of the par parallel polls would be would be correct. Sorry, Andrew, you go. Great. So I'm just going to share again. Um, we haven't been able to get to the mirror board yet, but we're going to go there in a second. So let's discuss. So, you know, very much to the point that uh, you made at the beginning about um, how it doesn't really speak to people directly. And we, we, we take it all the way back to um, this sense of, you know, our given emotional needs. You know, who are we every day in our lives? And I'm, I'm a psychosocial therapist. I've spent some time uh, studying and I practice this uh, understanding of our given emotional needs. At the moment, um, and, and, and you'll and you recognize them, you know, every human being has the need in order to survive, the need for attention, the need for status, the need for belonging, the need for autonomy, for security, for achievement, for privacy, for meaning and purpose, for intimacy. Obviously, there have been, you know, volumes of books uh, written about this, but there's um, the sense that at, within the current system, nearly all of these needs are being met by consumerism. We sell products into these needs so that we've convinced ourselves that when we buy these products, that we're getting our needs met. And that's how we become enslaved to the current economy. So we need to be able to offer people within these cans, within these communities, within this parallel polis, actively offer people healthier, better, more constructive ways to get these needs met. We'll never be able to problem, problematize the needs themselves. These are our motivations. These are how we survive. But we need to get them met in completely new ways so that people have a choice. They have an alternative to being on that hamster wheel that they cannot get off at the moment. And we feel that if this happens within communities specifically, and then multiplied and held in this parallel polis as constantly generating new ways of getting these needs met, then we're beginning to address people exactly as they are where they find themselves. They, they never need to hear about the idea of a parallel polis at all. <laughs> Pat, you want to say something from the neurological set point of view? Yes, this, this just backs up <clears throat> Indra's point. Um, I've been, I'm trying to write a book about the relationship between uh, neuroscience, mind science, and politics, uh, and, and, and public intervention. Um, and there's no doubt that, as Bob Marley once said, you know, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Um, and that, this is an aspect of the politics of the parallel polis is psychological, cognitive, emotional self-mastery, or at least non-reactivity. We our, our buttons are being pressed by extremely clever marketers, propagandists, people who are joining up software and neuroscience and finding the parts of the parts of our mind and parts of our evolved nature that are most susceptible to triggering. You know, fe but fear, anger, and loathing and panic are not the only primary emotions as the previous slide showed. So it's an active 
practice in the same way as you know economics would be a, an act of knowledge for trade unionists in the 19th and the 20th centuries. In the 21st century, we need to have an act of knowledge of how our inner landscape works, how our evolved inheritance works, how our brain and our bodies work, in order that we can possess ourselves, in order that we can act to create a better world without being derailed by all the forces that Andrew's been talking about before. So it's just to say that we're interested in this in a, in a kind of research basis, but we want it to become practice. I mean, m mindfulness maybe captures a bit of it, but also artistic creativity and creation and creativity is a way to possess yourself in this very, very seductive, overly attracting environment and and also have the energies to generate positive cultural forms, new ways of living that are attractive and that would attract you from the old dependent consumerist ways of living. But we think there's a lot of brain science that can help us um, find the techniques to do that. And as I say, there's a lot of people in the consciousness industries who are looking to the alternative and saying, we want to apply our techniques in your direction rather than in a, in a corporate direction. So we're now going to move to the, um, I'm going to put us in um, breakout rooms, if that's okay, unless there's any immediate questions before we go. And we're going to invite you to move to the um, Miro board. Now, uh, I don't know if everyone, if uh, everyone is familiar with the Miro board, but I will just show it. I put the link to the Miro board in the chat box and I'll just share the screen uh, and show you um, what we're inviting you to do. So, um, here we go. We're going to start here at this place. I don't know if, how many of you managed to get in already. Yes, I can see there's a few there. And what we want to invite first of all is to look at the question in this new um, axis of connecting the I to the we to the world as a new axis for the parallel polis. We're asking you to think about what pieces, what tools and what bits of architecture can we think of that would help to um, you know, build this parallel polis in a way that begins to have some loose structure and the ability to come together. So we're starting really at the ground level in this area of how do we get, help people to get their emotional needs met. Um, and I don't know how many of you are familiar with these tools, um, you know, creating at the, at the ground level, having empathy circles, uh, enroll yourself is like a new educational form. Uh, building is a is is an idea for um, you, know, you know a completely new kind of education that might happen at community level, which is more like character building for uh, education. Uh, fun palaces are literally you know places of attraction for people where they can enter into a space and then uh, learn about science or. You know, so these are all pieces of a community, if you like, that start to build this sense of together we're shifting the idea of what it means to be a citizen, what it means to be in this community together. Um, and Pat, I don't know if you'd agree with me, but I feel that given that it's already 11 o'clock now, that we could move to the other places as well. Sure in the um so you'll be able to move yourselves down uh, and see that these are the other pieces of um the parallel polis architecture that we can see coming into being so in the space of the we here are some tools and practices that already exist you know coming together through citizens assemblies coming together through cans, such as transition towns, they're the ones that already exist, um, using culture such as cosmolocalism, um, using festivals to bring people together uh, and begin to introduce uh, them as part of the parallel polis. And here on the right, 
are the is are the bits of evidence that um, you know that a that a parallel polis that that goes all the way up to the level of being able to influence at the international and global level uh, are, are already present. So what we'd invite you to do, we're going to break you out into groups, was just to really use this function here. I don't know if you're all, you just double click on this. You choose a note like that, and then, uh, you know, just, just write directly into it. Um, any thoughts that you might have that you would add either to the I aspect or to the we aspect or to the global impact aspect of what could become uh, a parallel polis. Um, and then if you want to have a glimpse again at the way that it comes together, this is at the bottom here. This is the sense of how these things come together, linking the complex human to the agency that they find in their communities to having a global impact. So is anybody not able to, um, if you'd like to put your hand up, you're not able to have access to the Miro that you need help with at all. Okay, I don't know how many of the people behind their screens are taking part. Um, just for a moment, I'm going to stop sharing and to put you into breakout rooms. Um, and put you into three breakout rooms. Uh, and we will, Pat, are you laughing at something? No, I'm laughing at, there's a lovely wee boy. Is that a wee girl, right. a wee boy? <laughs> Hello. Okay, so I'm going to open the breakout rooms now and invite you to do some, some things on the Miro board. If, if you feel that um, you um, are having trouble with the Miro board, then just please come out of your breakout rooms and uh, stay in conversation over here. So we'll be there for 10 minutes um, and we'll let you uh, come back after that. Report back. Thank you. Kaiser, I don't know if you can hear me at all. I think you're frozen completely, but if you can hear me or you want to put a message in the message box. Oh, everybody's disappeared. <laughs> Even Pat. How did, ah. Right, there we go. Oh. Hello, hello, back in the back in the real world. <laughs> so shall we perhaps um, I think maybe we should start with just having a feedback from you. Um, what it even felt like to take part in this kind of a um, session, you know, we're very conscious that we're sort of pointing at something that hasn't yet taken shape. It's very insubstantial, it requires an act of imagination, but we're really grateful to have you um, making that attempt with us. Um, and really would like to hear back from you what your experience was um, first and then what perhaps we'll have a look at the board together to see what you put on the board so if anybody would like to just share how their experience was of this well i find this a bit too abstract 
that mm-hmm. is as, as as you said but um sometimes abstract concepts can can help in ordering the kind of the um uh, thoughts and and they might provoke creativity but i didn't feel that now i don't know how to use cans or parallel polis uh, or or so so i found the gap between this these abstract concepts and then what it would mean in in, in practice uh, still a bit too deep so then but then again we can draw on existing stuff but this does, didn't really help in ordering that in my experience mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay I, i'd quite like to invite roberto just to roberto has been working with us uh, for, for quite a long time in the space of cans at the Alternative UK. And he's very much working in, in real time in Mexico and Tif- Tijuana um, and helping us build this can of cans. So Roberto, I wonder if you could offer something of your experience from a real a real place and doing real work. Yeah, thank you, Inda. Uh, hello. Um, I, I can understand why this is so abstract. It's uh, it's huge. It's it's uh, it's complex, and uh, we don't know how to get there. We don't know how it is going to look like in the end, or so we don't we we can't uh, trace a, a path to go over there. It's in a way like the Untitled Festival. It doesn't have a name. So um, how how do you how do you build something like this? And at the same time, we need to imagine very different kind of institutions. Uh, for example, we are all talking about different kinds of governance. We need to, to develop governance systems then that can allow us all to participate and, and, uh, and be effective. So uh, there are many things to take uh, into, into the design of these cans and can of cans, and one of them has to do precisely with the reality, with the everyday territorial reality. What happens in your life and at, a, at your at your uh, local uh, family friends level, uh, and start building from there. And and um, Dominic just asked a, a question that was very interesting, and. Um, yeah, and we were talking about the emotions that are going to come up uh, about facing this. Um, we need to start developing and answering the questions from each person's point of view. Each one of us has a piece of the puzzle and, and it's uh, able to contribute to it uh, from their own perspective. And um, it, this is very needed because unless we have this kind of anarchist, everybody participating into it, uh, it, it won't work. We really need to, to step up and, and become responsible of, uh, of the destiny of the things that we want. And, but on the other hand, uh, to address how to, to make this less complex, we need to start developing certain structures, specific, simple structures as, as the platforms to, to distribute food in your town or among your friends. You, you can start a can of cans with your friends, I, I mean a can with your friends, and just uh, uh, do a cooperative to distribute food among 50 families or friends. Um, if you develop that structure, we can connect these structures later. Uh, and, and this is one of the first stages to develop these small structures, but in a way that there are two characteristics very important in a way that, that, that we can connect them later. And this means that we need to agree on the way we gather information uh, we do the governance internally, so we can connect them. Um, and we, uh, by connecting them, we will be able to add, we will get the network effect. Does that make sense to you, Miko? 
uh well uh, um <laughs> well uh i'm i'm still a bit, uh, struggling a bit i mean one one of the main factors <laughs> i might be uh, alone in this so no no no, no. Can, if i could just say that one of the one of the factors that i've seen that in a lot of the the networks that we move in that there's quite a strong spiritual element um and there's a lot of storytelling and there's a lot of imagining and i i confess that when i was that that's one of the tools that i use all the time when i'm trying to think into the future but what surprises me all the time uh, and so much so that you know it's really the main subject of my book is that the thing that i'm imagining that needs to happen if i really pay attention it's already there but i don't have to make it up i don't have to build it myself it's just my new way of being able to see it that really all that's needed is a shift in perception it's not actually a building from the ground up it's not actually a reinventing of reality it's a seeing reality differently and that when you see it that way uh, things become possible for you because you can suddenly see something you couldn't see before and, and that's really the shift we're talking about um, so it looks abstract, but then only in the same way that your imagination seems abstract until you make it a reality or until you realize that it's already there, the thing that you were imagining. So um, that, that's just my little um, offering to that space and to show you, Mika, that I really empathize with that feeling of being outside a bit and not wanting to somehow um, dive into it because it feels too abstract. I, yeah. I would just, just ask to, you to yeah. take it away. Take it just, away. <laughs> just, just to clarify, I do try to imagine things that don't exist and, and imagine alternative, really radically different futures hmm. in my day-to-day -day job. Uh, I just uh, didn't connect with uh, this um, cans and parallel police, but I, hmm. uh, I'll look into it. That's, that's I, I hope. I hope you are infected right now, Miko, because you really need these kind of people. And uh, I, I want to add to the concept of Cosmolocal. Cosmolocal as well uh, addresses to the to the inner part, the spiritual part that Indra was talking about. It's, it's, so it's the, the whole, uh, but not only as, as a world, but the whole from, from your inner self coming into this Cosmolocal uh, idea. Exactly. We are essentially cosmolocal ourselves. Um, so I'm, I'm very noticing the time, and it's just a classic of the genre that you try something and uh, imagine that you've got at least twice as much time. But if anybody else would like to, please um, keep your um, address or your connection to the mirror board um, and visit it again, because we would really welcome your continuing um contribution to it it's not going to die after today um but i would really welcome from anybody who's still here just a few words uh or anything anybody else would still like to say before we close this room and make way for others any just, uh yeah and i might even put you on the spot <laughs> I would like to add a couple of things, uh, and I was holding myself because I've been working around these things for a while, and we've been developing them with with Indra. So I was hoping that somebody came up, but this is very possible. So what we're talking about here is absolutely possible. It's not only uh, things of that size already happening in the world, but they're not very evident. There are some like Facebook that you already that you can see in your everyday life um, that has the complexity of, of the organization we need to accomplish this um, but they are happening there and and uh, there are larger structures actually in the world so we can do it it's definitely we can do it we have all for a first time in humanity we have all the foundation we have the knowledge the technology and we are fed up and we have the internet because before Black Havel, I mean, they, they would have a, a terrible time trying to do a revolution with, 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 but right now with the internet, with the globalization of things, 
I'm pretty sure we, we will accomplish this. And uh, ah. just to say before the end, you know, this the print the spirit of this uh, event is called Untitled and deliberately so, because they feel as if many of the, as, as Roberto has been saying, many of the processes that are coming to a point uh, don't have handles uh, and we must risk trying a few handles. And we've tried to do that today, whether we're talking about the parallel polis, whether we talk about IWE World, uh, whether we're talking about citizens action networks or constitutes, you know, it, it's, it's, a for, it's a flood of names and a flood of terms but it's trying to make a very complex and dynamic reality graspable. So we throw ours into the general commons of Untitled. We would invite you all to come to us at the Alternative UK or thealternative.org.uk and explore these type these concepts with us, whether by responding to our blogs or contacting us directly or asking for, for meetings, because I think we're all involved in this Untitled process. Um, by responding with the best titles we can, but it's provisional, it's tentative. It's some might work for some and might not work for others. But we think this level of, inno of um, democratic innovation and political innovation um, and um, human innovation um, is what's required. So just before we finish, thank you very much for all of you for expending your, taking your time to be involved. But please use this as a toy for the future. That's basically, and, and, and do so on, on an ongoing basis. That's exactly how we should be treated.